This episode of the Nickelodeon Animation Podcast is brought to you by... From the makers of the Fenton Finder, it's the new Fenton Thermos. The perfect device for capturing ghosts. Eat hot Fenton Thermos, ghost gal! It may look like an ordinary thermos, but the Fenton Thermos can fire a beam of blue light and suck in and capture any ghost. But how am I going to get it to work? The Fenton Thermos can hold in multiple ghosts at once, but will need to be emptied into the ghost zone at your local convenient ghost portal. Thanks for the thermos! Available in green and gray, the new Fenton Thermos. Found wherever ghost hunting equipment is sold. Nick, 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 Nick. Nickelodeon! From Nickelodeon Studios in Burbank, California, this is the Nickelodeon Animation Podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Hector Navarro. Welcome to the podcast. Our guests today are some of the voices behind one of the most popular shows Nickelodeon has ever aired. Danny Phantom premiered in 2004 and instantly started amassing a cult-like following. The series star Danny Fenton, regular 14-year-old kid whose molecules got all rearranged after he had an accident with a very strange machine, and gained ghost-based superpowers. He immediately started fighting crime and catching ghosts with his best friends, Tucker Foley, Samantha Sam Manson, and his sister, Jasmine Jazz Fenton. Today, we're lucky enough to have with us the amazing voice actors who brought these characters to life. David Kaufman, Gray Griffin, Ricky Deshaun Collins, and Colleen O'Shaughnessy. First of all, guys, sincerely, thank you so much for coming down. This is going to be so much fun. It's so cool to see everybody. I asked you guys when the last time you guys all saw each other was, and I think it was to record the crossover. Is that right? The crossover yeah. short? Yeah. Yes. So guys, in case our listeners aren't aware, Nickelodeon and Butch just created this short that includes the star characters from all of his shows. Danny Phantom, Fairly Odd Parents, Tough Puppy, and even the new Bunsen is a Beast. You've got Bunsen popping in there at the end. What was it like to see each other after all these years to come back and do this crossover? I mean, what was that like? <laughs> it was great. I mean, well, it's the funniest thing we were just talking about uh, how old Ricky is now. Um, but he, you know, he's so he looks so different. He's got facial hair. And I he was know. such a kid when we recorded. He so. was a teenager, and I always he's felt bad man. for flirting with him. But now I, my husband is actually the same age as Ricky now, so <laughs> I could have probably hooked that up back then and just waited a little. Totally bit. okay. <laughs> we start yeah. young. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. You look no, great, Ricky. You look fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. It was really yeah. fun. Yeah. It's like a reunion. What was it like when you guys found out that Danny Phantom and crew were going to be the sort of creative guiding force behind this short? I love anything Butch is involved. I've been in almost every cartoon Butch has done. <laughs> He's t- making a huge mistake, but leaving us out of fun. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, um, we'll see if it survives without Gray. I don't know. If we'll, we'll, go. <laughs> we'll see. No, I love Butch. He's. I owe him so much. It was fun. Yeah. I mean, it was the it was the first time that. I had ever, you know, to take Danny Phantom and be speaking to the fairly odd parents yeah. characters. It was a, li- it was a little jarring for me. It was because all of a sudden Danny's outside of his world, and I sort of had to like adjust, yeah, my brain to that. But, um, but it's fun. He was a great like everyman character because he pointed out that uh, Tough Puppy wasn't wearing any pants right off the bat. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> he's not. Yeah. And then you find out who would win, Sam or Vicky. You know who's more of a badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vicky, you're just such a weirdo. Like, what's with your hair? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Vegetarian, get out of my face! <laughs> All right, somebody, please animate that. I, somebody, I, I got a hundred on Sam. Just yeah. in case anybody's wondering, <laughs> guys, what was it like working with Butch when you got cast in the show all those years back? What was it like working with him? Oh my god, it was great. He's was he's so he's such a giving director, and he's so funny, and he's so smart, and he's so, you know, he's very clear when he gives you a direction, and he's I don't know. There's um. It's just, it's a great experience to work with Butch. He's a wonderful director. Yeah, he's a great director, and he's able to make what he wants very clear in the session, but at the same time, have fun, and it's like a party. People are joking and laughing, and it's almost like you don't know, it, it kind of all blurs together. And, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, it's uh, not work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that sense of fun, I think, translates a lot into 
all of the shows that he does. Yeah. I'm going to have to disagree. Which I want to get an hired. Actor, you know, which is an actor, so he gets it. You know, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. Yeah. Some people don't. He lets you be yourself in the booth. I mean, I think for me, that was that was a lot of fun. That was the best part of it. Like, I didn't have to come in in here and have, like, I'm worried or mm-hmm. if I don't say my line right or if I get it wrong, he's like, no, do it again. That sucked. Do it better. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I can do that. That's pretty clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys get cast on Danny Phantom? Do you remember your initial reaction to like the concept of the show, to your specific characters? What was that like? I remember my audition at my agency. They're like, oh, there's this cartoon, Nickelodeon. I'm like, okay, cool, Nickelodeon, awesome. Let's mm-hmm. go do it. And uh, I remember reading the role and I was like, wow, that's really me. Like, There's certain roles you audition for. Yeah. You can see yourself in it. And the audition was, it was super smooth. And then they were like, oh, you got a call back. I was like, oh, cool. They're like, oh, they catch. I was like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Nice. <laughs> You're like, I'm Tucker. I'm t- that's who I am. I'm Tucker. I'm totally down. Like, yeah. that's me. Like, I, I squared away. But that's yeah, so no, great. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I remember, I couldn't believe how much he sounded like, um, Alex P. Keaton. Um, oh my God! <laughs> which, yeah. which, which is the, yeah, but, but which makes total sense because forever. Butch is, co- is completely obsessed with Back to the Future. So I was like, oh my God! Of course, yeah. <laughs> you know. Like, oh, you that's so funny. Him. Yep. And I did. I did the voice of Marty in for the, the Back to the Future series. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. my yeah. first, that very so first sense. foray into yeah. the and world you did of animation. Stuart Little, right? Another Michael Stuart J. Fox Little. character. That's right. That's yes. Right. Colleen, do you remember getting booked on Danny Phantom? I'm, I'm racking my brains. I, that part I don't remember. What I do remember very vividly is the table read, which oh. it's, it's rare yeah. for animation for you to get to do a table read. And I was like, oh, this is like, we're like doing like a movie or something. <laughs> like, this is fancy. <laughs> like, we had the big round table table and the scripts and I was so nervous because I yeah I was I had done a couple of shows but I it was it, this was my first Nickelodeon show yeah. and oh my gosh to walk into this building it's like walking into like fantasy land there's the bright colors and mm-hmm. there was basketball court I mean it was just like there was chocolate coming out of yes. a dispenser <laughs> <popcorn>. like <laughs> cereal yeah it was crazy Put, put golf and bagels. In the, you know yes. in the, but to do a table read like that was really exciting and and That's so cool um Back in the day, that's when we used to get our scripts messengered to our house. It was so wow. exciting. To get See, it, like, it happens. I have a, I have a. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it wasn't a pigeon though that oh, brought okay. it. I think it was a person. <laughs> <laughs> Although you know, I never saw the person, so maybe it was a pigeon, and I didn't really realize. strong. But, but that's that's my my um my big memory from the first time. I don't remember the the audition. I don't remember the callback, but I I remember walking into the table yeah. and that was that was really That's awesome. so for you guys how great was it to record at the same time versus if you would ever have to record something by yourselves I mean what's that like for you as an actor so it much makes better. yeah it makes a world of a difference like it's night and day literally to look at David in his Old. His little cubby. <laughs> cubby. Yeah, his cubby I, in his I, I, there's, there's in his a, we're in the studio, <laughs> but I was always this sort of in this isolation. But the, why? I still don't understand that. Because that's how special you were. Like you <laughs> needed your own I, area. I, yeah, no I don't. Distractions. Exactly. No I guess I always felt like I was being relegated to the. To the <laughs> I just think Butch didn't want people going ghost like in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just the stars always in that isolation, like you know Tara in on Fairly Odd Parents. She's always over there. I think they don't want. I think that they you have so many lines that they want to make. Okay. Your lines okay. Stay like on. Un- yeah. But in that of- sense, there would be. I, I'd be in there, and I'd hear this huge burst of. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what well, oh, was that? What was it? I, say, could you say it again? And I, oh, David, you can't. We can't do it again. It David, you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand anyway. You were there for it when it happened. So. I will say this particular cast though was one of those like symbiotic. Like it was always so much fun. Everyone in this group in this booth was just. You know, I mean, it's animation, and when you're in a group record, it's always fun. But for yeah. whatever reason, this particular group of people was just. Everybody meshed it with, and was it was hilarious. I remember leaving those sessions just on a high. Like I'd yeah. be like so happy for the rest of the and, day. And she was high. Yeah, I, that was that too. But she's gotten clean. It, I'm just so proud of you, Colleen. Now, yeah. well, it's legal Thank now. You. We totally turn your life around. I did. It really is legal did. now. I did. I got my kids back. And- <laughs> How close are you to your Danny Phantom characters? Ricky, are you a tech guy in real life? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, oh my God. Is that a no? I guess that's a no. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I email. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good. I good. email. Crazy stuff like that. But I, seriously, I'm not super 
tech savvy. Um, if you ask any of my friends, like I'll ask them how to do stuff, or like I'll give my computer to my friend, like, hey, can you clean it? Or like, how do you do this? It's running slow. And he's <laughs> like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's just taking a while to turn on. He's yeah. like, that's normal. I'm like, oh, I thought it was faster. <laughs> um, but I'm not super tech savvy, but I'm trying to catch up. You okay. know, like I, I email, I make phone calls. Um, All right. Don't tweet, but. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Colleen, are you are you an overachiever in real life? A little bit? Uh, you know, I think I uh, was. No. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I, I try to achieve my goals and I try to do things well. I am a, very much a perfectionist. I, um, I have very high expectations on my kids. Sorry, kids. <laughs> um, I do, and I don't even realize that I'm doing it. And every once in a while, my husband's like... It was a B. That's not that big. I know. I said I know, but college and what if the I get I get stressed for them, you know. So um, so yeah, I'm definitely a perfectionist, and I've always had that sort of mothering thing, like with both of my siblings, the same way. Even though I was the middle, my my I you know I took care of my brother. I was like, do you have your books? Do you have your this? Do you? I would when I was in kindergarten, he was in second grade, I guess. I would go pick him up from his class. Yeah. After school, and come on, we got to go home wow. and. Yeah. Question for you guys. What was it like to see the relationship between Danny and his best friend Sam blossom into maybe something else, something different throughout the series? Again, that's not something that commonly happens in cartoon shows like this. What was it like for you guys to see that happen and then perform it? I sort of, I mean, even from the initial first few episodes, I always thought this is going to sort of head yeah. that way. Yeah. Because um, there was always that kind of classic... You know the the Cheers Sam and Diane kind of thing. They, sure, they, they would have these little headbutting disagreements, but you could tell that underneath they really cared for each other. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I always thought it was going to head that way. And I'm glad that they didn't like completely go there with it though, because there's something really mm-hmm. special about a, a female and a male relationship, especially when you're young and at that, you know, age that where there's just a mutual respect and it's not all about like puppy love and everything. There's just yeah. a real like strength in that. It's, there's a sweetness to it and there's just a, a you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm just really glad that they, it was, it was like the tension was there yeah. and everybody knew that was going on, but they really kind of respected the purity of that relationship. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Great yeah. little moments. And, you know, when you guys would uh, tiff and then make up, the character's cheeks would get all blushy for a second. And then right, Tucker would be like, right. I'm right here, guys. I'm right here. Just no, seriously. Great. Yeah. I'm still right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If there are ever adults I, in, a, in an adult relationship, there should always be Tucker just in the middle of the sheets. You know, just like with his arms around the it's like, guys, guys, movie's not over yet. They're just yeah. making out and then Tucker pops up from under the sheet. Like, what? There, yeah. was, a ki- there was a kiss, though, right? I mean, yeah. didn't they? But I, yeah. But, yeah, there but, was. But wasn't it like a flash? Like, a, where it wasn't real or? it was like it was like let's see where this goes and you know in the very last episode it was Danny going I don't know what's gonna happen next but I hope you're there and we're still friends and let's you know let's figure it out and it was it was something that again it wasn't leaned into too heavy yeah. I remember that they there. did totally explore it and I'm going oh my god what's going on and then it turned out to be just a dream yeah. right yeah oh yeah, yeah you gotta have those okay. exactly yeah. I never should have betrayed your trust by spying on you and your boyfriend Ugh, he's not my boyfriend. I dumped him as soon as I figured out that you were right about him being a phony. Apparently that is the only way a boy can like me. That's not true. That's totally not true. There are a million reasons a boy could like you. I mean, you're smart, you're fun, you're cool, you're pretty. Why am I still talking? I am such a spaz. Still friends? Psh, the best. David, what was it like when you heard that uh, Danny was getting a lot of fan mail from young girls, from young women? <laughs> Real popular with the ladies. Um, you know, it's funny because I get these messages from girls and older women who mm-hmm. who actually was say, "I have a crush on Danny Phantom. Yeah. I'm in love with a cartoon character. I he. Oh my gosh, he's so dreamy. He's so cute. He's a, and they'll converse with me." And it's not me yeah. they're conversing <laughs> yeah. with. They want to talk they're, to Danny. They want to yeah. talk to Danny. Yeah. You're like, and, send Danny money at I, this address. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a little like, I don't want to like spoil anything for them. I don't want to rock their world. And, and yeah. so I, I like, do I talk to them as Danny Phantom? Mm-hmm. Or do I talk oh, to them as so me <laughs> and say, yeah, my my wife, blah, 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 blah. Because they don't want to hear that. They, they, they want this <laughs> fantasy of Danny yeah. alive. So it's a little 
weird sure. in, in that sense. That's a hell of a first date, though. Hey, you want to go to the ghost world? Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, no? Yeah. It's like, he brings new meaning to He ghosted me. Like, after the date, he just ghosted me. I don't know, I don't know where he went. <laughs> I, I want to do conventions. You guys, not that, sorry to take this away from me, but, but wouldn't it be fun to, like, go to towns as the cast of Danny Phantom and yes. meet fans and sign Yeah. Things? Do we get paid for that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm totally down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so any any convention promoters? Yes, uh, have us all. Oh. Yeah. That's call so call Gray. Yeah, it's got my my booker is Jeff at CelebrityTalentBookings.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I think it'd be great to have like the whole cast all together at one event. You know. I mean, totally. I, I I don't know if you guys have any idea how insanely packed and popular like a panel would be of you guys. What has it been like for you guys to see? Because when the show was on the air, the internet was a thing. But it's very different today. And there's that instant, you know, feedback you get from fans. What's it like been for you guys to see the audience that Danny Phantom has still is still accumulating all these years later and you're still constantly getting feedback and messages and you know, bring it back, when's it coming back? I mean, mm-hmm. what's that like what's it been like for you guys? It's kind of crazy to me. Like whenever I see, you know, there's the fan art and it's it's daily. Bring Danny Phantom back every and it's like, wow, it's been ten years. Yeah. And people still love it. It still holds up and they really truly like they're like they're begging like butch mm-hmm. bring it back please <laughs> mm-hmm. it's kind of i mean it's great but it's so it's strange at the same time yeah have you guys seen that social media campaign hashtag go ghost again people oh, yeah. are trying to oh, yeah. bring it yeah, yeah, back yeah, yeah. i know yeah, yeah. i know i haven't you have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now what exactly is the purpose of this skill contest to defeat all foes reach level 13 and retrieve the seven silver keys to the apocalypse And what happens after that? Gain ultimate power and access to the World Wide Web! Well, I think the answer that I would get from you guys if I asked you, would you come back, is a resounding yeah. If it were to come back, how would you want it to come back? Would you want it to pick up right where it left off, or would you want maybe some years to have progressed in the story? Maybe double scale. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> 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 10 grand and a later and like with a green m and <laughs> <laughs> we'll work out the minutia yeah definitely as long as that's there and then you know just whatever but that you know double scale I think great. it'd be fun to see them as adults with their kids I fighting ghosts too, too. Yeah. I would have thought that like I'm you know I'm more of a like I'm kind of a purist when it comes to it, so I would have thought that I would have wanted to, to stay the way it was, sure. but then seeing Butch's 10 years later, which I want to see a jazz 10 years later. Nah. Um, but right. just seeing those drawings and stuff, I think it would be kind of interesting. What do you think happened to Tucker? What do you think happens to him? I, I Okay. <clears throat> Let's get my, into it. My story time voice. Okay. I think Tucker, in his <laughs> teenage years, grew up, probably founded uh, Instagram. Yeah, oh, right. definitely. Yes. Um, yes, has all the ladies and fights ghosts in his spare time with his best friend Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen, where do you think Jazz is? Maybe ten years later, what would you like to see uh, with the character? Well, I I think because she found out towards the end there mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. you know maybe she's she's running her own company, but on the side maybe she helps out at night. Oh, and, that'd be cool. You know, she needs a suit. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's get her one of that Fenton family suits. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. David, where's Danny Phantom 10 years later? What's he doing? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, I could kind of wonder, like, it, is it that... Because it was so much under wraps in a lot of ways as far as his identity... I don't know. And at like the end, it's out later. in the open. Yeah, it's out it in the now, open. It, are, are people aware of it? Is the pub? Is it like a? Is he more like a, a Spider-Man kind of figure where people yeah. know that? Yeah. That, that, oh, that we're having the problem with this ghost. I think so we, we need to call Danny Phantom. Hide it from our kids, like I think our kids have no idea that we're. Oh, ghosts. that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 So yeah. With the kids we're in high now. We uh, we are. college area. Yeah. Uh, might be even after quite a little after college, mm-hmm. just out of college. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, so Greg, you're saying you're you're still ghost hunting, ghost fighting, but hiding it from kids. Yeah, from Danny and Sam's kids. Yeah, I think so. It should be, I guess, I guess a little bit more than ten years later. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should tell them why parents don't listen. Even worse, they don't understand. Why can't they accept me for who I am? Sam, I- I'm talking about my powers. My problems? Oh, right. Me too. Did you guys always plan on being voice actors? Honestly, I totally fell into it. Yeah. It was a total accident. Um, I've always done a lot of theatrical stuff, and um, 
series and stuff. And and then I did go through this period where I did like a, a billion on camera commercials, mm-hmm. and and I was going in for this on camera commercial audition. And casting director um, Danny Goldman saw me. Literally, it was just right place at the right time. Saw me, and he was casting the Back to the Future animated series yeah. for CBS. And he's like, um, David, come here in my office. Is uh, t- here. Take a look at this. Go, go audition for this. Go, go in, go in the booth over there. And and so I did. I don't even remember if I had a call back. I don't think I did. You just booked it. I I, I auditioned for it, and wow. I think that they had to send the tape. I think Michael Fox had to. Prove it, cool. Because since I was sort of like dubbing for his yeah. voice, I'm gonna put in yeah. the J. He's like Michael Fox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 my brain didn't recognize yeah. that. Mike, I was like Michael Mike. Fox. Yeah. Mike had to approve <laughs> my voice. Yeah. <laughs> MJ. <laughs> yeah. And um, and I guess I think he did. And um, he's, like, hey, he's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Colleen, how did you get into voice acting? Was it an accident, or was it uh, something that you always wanted to do? Well, I always. I always watched Saturday morning cartoons yeah. for us when we were kids. That's all we had was Saturday morning. <laughs> um, or like the Flintstones after school, mm-hmm. um, Wonderful World of Disney, the Muppets. Those were always my favorite things. And I always kind of just gave voices to babies or animals that could not speak for themselves. <laughs> They'd have a look on their face and be like, that's what that baby's saying. Um, and I kind of actually bo- bothered some of my friends in high school. They're like, just talk normal. And I just could, I didn't have any control over it. It was a sort of Sybil like. And I did I did musical theater. Yeah. I started when I was like in eighth grade or so. And then I went to college for musical theater. But I got a dual majors because I thought, oh, I want to do music therapy. And then by cool. the end of college i was like i don't want to do any more school (laughs) Um, but then i also didn't want to do musical theater anymore Mm. and i was doing a voice and an instructor came running over and was like was that you and i'm like i'm sorry they just kind (laughs) of come out and she goes no you need to do voiceover and that was the first time i actually had heard that term before yeah like i remember i remembered when the little mermaid came out and i got i got the cd and i played it in my dorm room and i'm singing to i'm like i want to be the little mermaid like that was that was it for me when she said that i was like oh my god that's somebody's job wait whoa I'm going to do this. And I was in Michigan, and I was like, hmm, can't do this here. So That's I awesome. Moved out to L.A., and yeah. that was it for me. Sweetie, I know what we do doesn't make sense sometimes, but you're only 16. Biologically, but psychologically, I'm an adult, and I will not allow your insane obsession with ghosts to pollute the mind of this impressionable little child. Come, you abused, unwanted wretch. I'll drive you to school. Huh. That's weird. Jasmine never offers to drive Danny to school. That could only mean one thing. That's not our daughter. That's a ghost. Danny, no, it's a trap! Ricky, when did you know you were going to be an actor? When did you know that you were going to do that? And did you always know you were going to do voice acting, too? I did. Uh, it was completely intentional. Um, <laughs> at six years old, I was. I remember I was watching TV, and I told uh, my grandmother at the time, it was a booking agent, she, I told her, I said, Grandma, I want to do that. And she goes, okay, sweetie. And six months later, it was like, no, Grandma, I want to be on TV. And she was like, okay, when you're ready. And I'm like, three months later, I was like, no, Grandma, now. I'm like, I want to do it now. And um, she gave me a few lessons. We did about two months of training. She took me over to my agent. Um, wow. And, um, you know, I met with them. And they, I've, my, not my agent at the time, but they signed me after we met. And it was kind of like a, a cakewalk since then. I mean, I'm very wow. blessed and very fortunate. Like, I've yeah. been working since I was six started in movies and TVs. I've done the cult classics, like Little yeah. Giants and all that fun stuff. And um, started doing like McDonald's spots, like radio spots. Mm-hmm. And that kind of turned into uh, animation. And first big gig was was Recess. Obviously, yeah. I did that. That was really cool. And mm-hmm. then I uh, hopped over to Nickelodeon. It was, it was really cool. It was really cool going from Disney to Nickelodeon. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, wait, I'm leaving Disney. Should I do this? And I'm like, wait, they're paying me. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm totally going. I'm totally yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it, awesome. it's always been something I wanted to do. Um, mm-hmm. Camera and, and voiceover. Like, it's always been there. Gray, I think we've I think we've had this conversation yeah, before. I, just, I did stand up and I did impressions. Yeah, but I've always done voices since I was little. Like, Colin, I like since I was, I, and I always wanted to be an actor. Like, I never, I never even thought about anything else. Like, from the time I was four or five, like I remember in in preschool they had us do the first letter of your name, which my my given name is Aaron, Aaron mm-hmm. Gray. Um, but I 
it, it was a big E, and I put in, and I put Aaron the Entertainer, you know, and, <laughs> and, I, st- and, I, and I wasn't even like an actor. I was just, and because the funny thing is, I do, you know, I do singing, and I do mm-hmm. this, and I do, you know, a lot of different. I did comedy, and I do voiceovers, so it's more of like an entertainer thing than an actor thing. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so yes, I I never ever considered doing anything else, and I really thought I was going to be just like this poor destitute person that was just trying to get because I was like I'm never doing something else I mean I'm just going to be one of those loser actors that just like, keep plugging away What is your advice for young people who are maybe interested in doing what you do who are maybe interested in acting and maybe voice Don't acting Don't do it Great Stay away Yeah We've got enough people mm-hmm. <laughs> Ray wants all got the jobs all Yeah <laughs> Gotta keep that circle small Gotta keep it small <laughs> tell people not to let anybody ever tell you no because I refuse to let people tell me no I'm like oh really okay yeah here we go just keep going at it figure out what you're good at you know don't totally I mean do listen to people but yeah <laughs> you know take advice but also take that advice inward and feel if it's right for you mm-hmm. because nobody knows better what's right for you than you yeah and uh, nobody's gonna work harder for you than you that's true. No one's going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself. And when it comes to voiceover, think in terms of character, not just silly voices. People yeah. tell me I've got a good voice. I should do voiceover. That's fantastic. That's mm-hmm. a good place to start. You got to have that tool, but then you also have to think in terms of character and what does that, you know, all the basic acting things. What who am I talking to? What's my intention? What's my story? Where have I been? Where am I going? Mhm. So you'd recommend people to take acting classes, acting classes. improv yeah. classes. Yeah. Mhm. Cold mm-hmm. reading classes. Yeah. Because if you screw up like the first couple times you read the thing, they're not going to let you do a second take. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, they're like, Just your five what? minutes. But if, you do a, <laughs> but if you don't make any mistakes and you do a great first read, they'll go, do you have any other ideas for the character? Then you can, then you get like two shots at then the Then there you go. Yeah. That's really great advice. Uh, David, what advice would you give yourself in terms of acting and voice acting when you were starting out? If you could go back in time and give your nine-year-old self, your 15, your 20-year-old self some advice, what would it be? If you could go back in mm-hmm. time. Back in time. time. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ooh, that's a... I would say to my younger self, be open to other things other than just acting yeah because i had i think about the opportunities maybe that i i, I could have pursued sure. when i had opportunities to because i you know like i've, I've done series and uh, um there was a, a, a sitcom that i worked on for for four years and i look back and i go i had four years where i could have shadowed the director and watched them yeah. and learn from them yeah and, you know be open to writing and directing and and pursue those things yeah. and do those things while you're, you know, you're the hot yeah. 20 year old, while you're 22 there. year old. While you're there on set. Because yeah. then as you get older, um, you might have opportunities to branch into other things. Absolutely. That's so. great advice. Take advantage of where you are when you're there. Always be learning. Right. Exactly. Always be learning. Yeah, exactly. that's awesome. Ricky. What advice would you give your young self starting out or somebody else who's starting out who wants to maybe get into voice acting and animation? God. My young self, I I would tell myself to enjoy it. Yeah. And really be in the moment and be there. Like I was so young when I started. I was doing recess at 13 and and I was doing Danny Phantom, you know, 17, 18 when I like, through college. And um I didn't really think I, I understood the magnitude of what I was doing at the time. Yeah. Now people say, Oh my gosh, you're you're Tucker, or, oh my gosh, you're Vince. Like, I grew up with you. I'm like, no, you didn't. They're like, no, seriously, I grew up with you. Like, I, me and my brother, or me and my sister, me and my mom and my dad, we watched you every Saturday. And to me, that's something I didn't embrace growing up. Um, I didn't really, like I said, understand the magnitude of what I was a part of. And I think I would tell myself just understand what you're doing and what you're a part of and just enjoy it. Like, be in the moment. And um, I think for anyone else, I w- one of the things my grandma always told me, um, your talent will always make room for you. Oh. Don't worry about what you don't book. Yeah. Don't worry about how many no's you get. What is for you is always for you and will be. No one can take it from you because your talent will make room for you. So if anyone going through audition, audition, get no's, 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 yeah. don't worry about it. It's, it's not for you. Yeah. What's for you, nobody can take from you and you'll get it. I love I'm that. stitch so that on a pillow. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Guys, do you guys have a favorite fan interaction, a favorite fan moment for Danny Phantom? 
there was this a, a group of fans, and they're probably listening to this right now. <laughs> Don't and they're going, I hope that they're gonna. He's gonna talk about when he came and met us at UCLA. But they there was a um, a big like animation uh, something going on at, at UCLA. I can't remember what it was. And and uh, this fan club of Danny Phantom said, we're gonna we're. Um, I think it was right after the show stopped production. Sure. And they wanted to. They wanted the fourth season. So we're, we're going to be here and we're going to demonstrate. In wow. Front of oh this, I think it was something with Nickelodeon at UCLA. We're going to we're gonna have a big demonstration. Wow. And would you please come and support? And I was like, well, okay. I, you know, I'll come and support them. That, sure. You know, that's, that, that's so sweet of them to do. Yeah. And so I showed up and like a few days before I had gotten sick. I had the flu or whatever and it, or cold and it went into my voice. Mm-hmm. So I was really I had no voice. I was I was hoarse and raspy and I got there and I could barely talk. But I didn't want to let them down and they're like, "Please do the Danny Phantom voice." So I'm I'm forcing myself. I'm struggling, uh. pushing myself <laughs> to do this and I totally blew out my cords oh, and like for like 2 or 3 weeks I had no voice and I was like, "I'm an idiot. 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 Idiot." <laughs> so and also I they so were probably like, eh, "Not really." Yeah, quite. yeah, and, yeah. And they were like, exactly "He doesn't like sound Danny. exactly like a real life." <laughs> so funny. And so I disappointed them and I kind of ruined 3 weeks of work for myself. So that was <laughs> My, uh, that's that your favorite my, fan moment? That's not great. my favorite. It was probably my most memorable. memorable. That's so funny. That's great. That's cool. I actually got a, um, I got a letter in the mail from my agency, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, what's this? I opened it up, and I don't remember the kid's name, but a kid actually drew a picture of Tucker mm-hmm. and sent it to my agent, and my agent forwarded it to me, and I was like, I think the kid was might have been like 10, 11, yeah. and it was really good, and that was one of those moments that I kind of reflected like, wow, I'm actually touching like yeah. kids and, and not in that way. That's ridiculous, guys. Um, <laughs> I listened like, to this I podcast and he said it's so weird. He talks about how he I'm making an impact like on children. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was really cool to, to really see special. someone take the time to draw your character yeah. and figure out where to send it and how to, how to get I it know. to you. Like I, me so growing special. up, yeah. I would have never, I would have never thought to do that. Yeah. But now I'm like, wow! Like these kids actually enjoy the our our product, our our work so yeah. much that they draw and they send and and they and I send it right back. <laughs> <laughs> it right back. I do not accept unsolicited. <laughs> it, it was surreal That's for so me. Great. Like I, I had yeah. never, I had never gotten like gotten that. Yeah. I've gotten stuff from but other stuff like, I've done. In the same way, you saw TV and you're like, I want to do that. Your guys' work influenced a kid so much that he drew this, and you said it was really good. That kid might be an animator today. Right. Colin, do you have a a favorite? I was at a convention, and I was sitting at my table, and I had all my my pictures out. And this kid came up. Kid, he's probably in his early 20s. Mm -hmm. And he's looking, and he's like, oh, yeah, I recognize that. Mm -hmm. And then he he stopped at jazz, and he literally clutched his chest and went, (laughs) oh! You got me in my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cute, that's and it was so just great. you know, like like Ricky said, like to think that oh, that's what they watched when they were a kid. Like yeah. you know, I watched the Flintstones and Scooby Doo and the Super Friends, and you know, that's that's the that's what they watched when yeah. they were growing up, and that's it's kind of kind of cool. So crazy that it's you're some, part of that. It's somebody's Flintstones. Danny Phantom is somebody's Super Friends. Right. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's that cool. is that's that so is great. really cool. Gray, do you have a favorite Danny Phantom specific fan interaction? The, the costumes are incredible. Oh, like, I've we seen have to talk so about yeah. Great Danny Phantom cosplay. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I don't. I, they're, they're all incredible. Like the contacts and everything. Yeah. Just crazy good. The poses, the photography, yeah. the wigs, the you mm-hmm. know the armor, the whole thing. Yeah. It's that you know they they'll have like the whole cast. Mm-hmm. They have a bunch of different you know kids dressing up I've young had people. I've groups come up like that where they're, they're missing a Sam, and I'm like, I'll be your Sam, and Aww. take pictures with them as you know with wow. all like yeah. It's wow. great. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's so cool. That's, that's so cool. cool. Well, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for coming in. This has been so much fun. Aww. This is really, really special. We he hope... said that to us at Loud House, though, too. Oh. <laughs> no, no, listen, to you guys, to Loud House, to Loud House, I didn't mean it. To Loud House, I was, like, I was like, we'll see. We'll see how people like this. This is a brand new thing. But Danny Phantom is a special show. It's so great. And it's uh, awesome to see you guys. And hopefully, on behalf of the fans, we get to see some more Danny Phantom Absolutely. someday. But they'll the see us for a little bit on the uh, crossover. 
Exactly, yeah. guys. Uh-huh. That Gil, crossover. Gil nostalgia. If you haven't seen it, it was so great. Yeah. Every, I mean, look, everybody's going to throw this term around and they're going to be tweeting it at you guys, but yeah. this is legitimate. All of the feels, just all of the chills and the goosebumps when you see these characters and it's your guys' voices again and they're there and there's a ghost portal and the thing's coming out. So check out the crossover. It's on social media right now. Go get it. Go look for it. Go tweet it. You said it right. You said it right. You said it right. Oh, hey guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed our conversation with the incredible cast of Danny Phantom. Huge thanks to David Kaufman, Gray Griffin, Ricky Deshaun Collins, and Colleen O'Shaughnessy for coming in and sharing some stories. That was awesome. Guys, head over to nickanimationpodcast.com for all of our episodes and behind the scenes stuff. Leave us a review or a comment if you'd like. It helps us out. Thanks to the awesome crew who puts this podcast together. This podcast is produced by Jonathan Highlander, Dana Vasquez Eberhardt, Kelly Smith, Andrew Hubner. Original music by Useful Creatures. This week's episode edited by Josh Caldwell, Jonathan Highlander. All of the incredible social media for our podcast is made by Narbe Manassians, Sammy Armager, David Watson. And thanks to the man who works the controls and makes me sound better than I have a right to, Manny Grava. Until next time, thanks for listening to the Nickelodeon Animation Podcast and keep watching cartoons. Cartoons.